Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to yet another episode of The Gloving Paradigm. I am your host Peter aka LPD8 Dubuque and this week it's going to be a very fun week at least for me. I don't know about you but at least for me this is going to be a fun topic to talk about because I always have a nice little conversation with my younger brother about this topic and I figure that I would expand this topic to you guys. And it is pretty much just about stretching. First things first I do want to let everyone know that yes Lights On has pretty much getting ready to go underway. I know that there was some talk about opening up another bracket, so if you want to go reconfirm that, that would be awesome. And if you want to compete, then I would highly recommend getting onto the registration as soon as possible before all the slots fill up. Uh, if you guys actually remember from my previous episode on the intro to competitive gloving, that they usually only allow 32 slots. Except for when it's IGC, then it's a total of 64 slots, but that is neither here nor there. Anyways, just want to let you guys know that Lights On is pretty much getting, getting ready to gear up. So if you are one of the competitors who have registered to compete, I highly suggest that since this is an online competition, to get a couple of shows recorded before it actually starts, so you don't actually stretch yourself out too much of trying to get that done. And the last piece of news I do want to let you guys know is that if you did go to EDC, Futuristic Lights is offering a huge discount to the people who have been affected of confiscated gloves to help you actually replace your gloves that have been confiscated by security at a massive discount price. The way you want to go about that is actually hitting up their customer service line to let them know and they will be able to assist you from there. I just want to give you guys that kind of quick tidbit so you guys know what's going on and now we can actually probably get into the episode. So let's talk about stretching. Uh, I definitely <laughs> definitely thought this was an interesting topic because I always see a lot of newcomers always asking about stretching techniques and things like that so what I wanted to do is actually compile a pretty much a thorough detailed analysis of resources that you can go through, some ideas that you have to think about when it comes to stretching as well as trying to provide as much of this resource material as possible for you so you guys can delve deeper. Now granted, I will certainly say I am no expert on physiology or anatomy. However, with my experience through the military and as well as gloving, I have learned pretty much a good gist of physiology in terms of hand and arm strength and things of that nature. So, why is stretching so important? Well, there's a multitude of reasons besides what some people say is it just makes it easier for yourself to actually do it. It also helps prevent muscle failure so early on as well as crampings or any possible injuries that you could accumulate. So one of the biggest things that I always want to tell people is that stretching actually triggers an effect in the body to tell the body that it needs blood to be pushed into that area. So when you're stretching your fingers, your hands, your wrists, your arms, your shoulders, there's going to be more blood going there for a reason because you're signaling to your body that this is going to be an area that's going to use a lot of energy. Not only that, it really helps bring oxygen into your muscles. Yes, your muscles do need oxygen. Everything in your body needs some form of oxygen and the way that your body gets the oxygen is through the blood. You know, your blood goes to your lungs, grabs the oxygen, expels carbon dioxide, and takes that oxygen to the rest of the body where it's needed. Okay, and the stretching allows pretty much your blood flow to be able to be increased in those areas, thus allowing more oxygen to those muscles, thus making it a lot easier for yourself. You know, and of course, like I've said, it prevents cramps and any other future injuries that might accumulate. Such things kind of like carpal tunnel is something that a lot of people are always are concerned about. So stretching will help at least minimize and prolong those effects from actually accumulating on you. So that's what one of the main, well, the biggest reasons why you should be stretching. Now, I can certainly tell you from my experience, what I like to do is if I get in that kind of creative feel of gloving, what I would do is I'll spend about a good 30 seconds to maybe a minute just kind of going at it, not going full hard at it, but just kind of fiddling around with concepts and stuff like that. And then I'll shake my hands <clears throat> and wait a couple of seconds before I actually go into stretching because it's also another precursor signal to my from my body to say, hey, I need more blood in this area. Thus, when I got to stretch, it's much more effective of actually pre-oxygenating my muscles, getting the blood flow going and things like that. Not only that, it kind of just helps 
you know, kind of, as some people like to say, shake the dirt off a bit, you know, get the rust off. So what do I find that I actually think is very, very important on stretching is not necessarily just your hands and your wrists. You know, you also have to take into consideration that you do use your forearms, you know, with the muscles being an interweb of connectivity, you know, you technically, if at all possible, stretch the entire body. And that's just my opinion, because then now you actually have much more even blood flow throughout the entire body. But to some people, they don't want to do the entire body, which I can understand. If it comes down to that, my recommendation is that you stretch everything up to your shoulders. Because you do use your shoulders as well. You use your arms. And you use every form of muscle between your shoulders and your hands. Okay? So stretching all of that is also going to help. Now I can also say if you extend it to like your chest and back, that's even better. However, I know some people are probably going to stop at the shoulders. So when it comes to your hands, besides just your palms, you know, you got your fingers and the knuckles in between each digit that you should be stretching as well. Because these are all points of where your tendons and your muscles are going to be stretched the most. So those are where it's most important. And I know a couple of people have told me when I asked the question about stretching, you know, just asking questions of what ideas of stretching should they take into consideration. One person definitely wanted me to stress the fact that thumbs are very, very often overlooked and should also be pretty much tended to just as equally as everything else. And I definitely agree. And I can understand that some people might say that, you know, stretching your thumbs are too, you know, it's a little weird and awkward, but there are very simple stretches that you can do, you know, simply trying to get your, your thumb to touch your pinky without bending your pinky over. That is a good way to stretch it. You know, and assisting stretches is also a great thing. Now, when it comes to the forearm area, which is pretty much your wrist in the forearm itself, I find this extremely important to do because as recently as a couple weeks ago, I've been noticing, especially with my wrists, that they ache a lot. Now, granted, I have some pretty bad sleep patterns and I have a tendency of sleeping on my wrists pretty hard, so I might be doing damage that way. However, this is something I have to pretty much portray because without your wrist, you're not really going to get anywhere in gloving. You're going to be very, very limited in your mobility. So, you know, stretching all the wrist muscles and all the tendons that run through your wrists are going to be very, very important. Okay, now when it comes to like your finger stretches and your thumb stretches, you know, uh, a lot of people like to take one finger and stretch it back and push all the other ones forward. That way you're actually stretching the tendons in between your fingers. Again, this is all to help with flexibility and durability. Okay, but your tendons are pretty much one of the major things that you do want to stretch because after a while they're going to start tightening up and you're going to get that feeling of things locking up. And that's when you're getting into some bad territories, when you actually start locking up like that. And I've been there before, and I can certainly say there were other factors taken into place that I didn't really look and actually attended to. So I'll definitely get into that in a few minutes, but I just definitely want to let you know that your tendons are pretty much what you really want to focus on besides just your muscles. Because your tendons are pretty much the most elastic part in your hands and in your wrists and things like that. So when it comes to you know your forearms you know and your wrists a lot of people are going to use a wall to help assist or they're going to use their other hand basically what a lot of people are going to do is that you just push on your hand so it's a nice palm facing forward and you get a nice little 90 degree angle on your wrist and you're just going to keep pushing back until you feel a nice little stretch then you're going to hold it there for about 10 to 15 seconds before you let go okay and of course then you can do it the other way where you actually have your hand pointing straight down and your palm point inwards and you make that 90 degree angle underside and start pushing in your fingers a bit so that she stretches that out as well. Those are pretty much the simple ones I do and those are the ones that I actually work on the most just because I tend to feel the tightness in my forearms a lot and stretching in that manner basically helps keep that from happening. Now one thing I do want to stress is that a stretch that I like doing that really helps on the inside of your forearm that's pretty much going up to the inside of your elbow. What I like to do is actually take a flat surface like a table, turn my hand upside down, and then pretty much sit on top of that. But Well, not literally sitting on it, but literally just, you know, putting up, put my hand on the table and just kind of like leaning back a little bit and my fingers are pretty much extended all the way back. And I can actually feel not only in my forearm, but in my upper arm, all the way down to my fingers. I can feel that entire part stretch if I push 
nice and steady on it. Okay, now if you're gonna use a table for the other way, which is pretty much having your hand pointing straight down, what I like to do is actually put my fingers flat on the table, the tops of the finger touching the table, its insides are pointing towards your, uh, towards your palms. And then what I like to do is kind of lean back a little bit and kind of start you know, hunching down a bit until I start feeling that stretch on the top part. That is also, in my opinion, very, very important because you're gonna feel that when you do a lot of liquid slash finger roll maneuvers, you're gonna really feel the tightening part happening in that area. So those are the two main stretches that I always stress the most just because, you know, the tendons in your forearms are connected to tendons in your fingers and if you stretch out the tendons in your fingers, they're gonna be fine, but you're gonna feel pretty much a inability because your forearms are starting to tighten up and therefore start affecting your performance. So just as important as your hands need to be stretched out, your forearms definitely need to be stretched out. And I will certainly say when it comes to things like elbows, never really actually stretched out the elbows without the idea of hyperextension. So if there are ways that you can stretch the muscles and the tendons in your elbows, I highly suggest doing so. So that way you don't have to worry about that, okay? So when it comes to the shoulders, I actually find this very important because yeah, granted you're not necessarily moving them, but you are using them to put your arms in certain places when you're doing certain concepts. Therefore, I find it important for shoulders to get stretched so the blood flow from the shoulder area isn't constrained because you know, when, when you constrain a certain part, but everything after that constraint is all loosed up, ready to go, it's, it's defeating the purpose because now you have this bottleneck situation in your body where the blood's trying to get there, but it can't get there fast enough because it's constrained by its limitation. So that's where I always tell people, you know, start stretching your shoulders because that f definitely, definitely helps a whole lot. Okay, if you asked me, how do I go about stretching from which part to the other? The first thing I'm gonna do is shoulders just because it's really, really simple and it doesn't take a whole lot of time to actually get to the point where your shoulders are nice and stretched out. And then of course I'm gonna work on the elbows and upper arms to actually get those going. Basically I'm gonna start from the shoulder all the way down to the hands because I'm gonna be opening up my blood flow from the first point all the way down to the last point instead of doing the last to the front, if that makes any sense. Okay, so once I actually get to all of that, yeah, it takes me probably a good 20 minutes of stretching because I'm stretching so much of different parts of the body. But I will certainly say by the time you're done stretching, you the best way I can describe this feeling is like if you wear like leg weights and arm weights for a long period of time and you go running around and you do a whole bunch of, you know, activities that exert a lot of energy. Once you actually take those off, you actually have that feeling that you're much lighter and you can move much faster and you have much more mobility and you don't have that much of a restraint because your body acclimated to that weight that since now it doesn't have that weight anymore, it's still acclimated that the weight is still there, thus causing this increased performance level, okay? That's what stretching should at least feel to you once you're done doing the stretching before you actually get into if you're doing a lab session, recording a video, whatever the case might be, whatever activity that you're doing in terms of gloving, the feeling that, you know, wearing like leg and arm weights that you get after, you know, running around doing stuff and then taking them off and doing the same things again, that's how it should feel when you're done stretching. Okay, and I know it's kind of hard to explain that feeling, but the best way I can explain it to you is that you go get some, go get something that has a good amount of weight carry it around for probably a good hour or two doing you know some activities that causes you to exert some energy and then take that weight off and then you'll understand what i'm coming uh what i'm talking about so that's where i find it very important for stretching to do okay it's one of those things that i honestly think people need to really focus on and that's the result that i hope people are getting now i know not a lot of people are going to have that same sensation feeling that i tend to get but I'm hoping that you can get somewhere close to that to kind of have the idea of where I'm coming from. Okay, so one of the many things that I've asked a lot of people is a lot of resources. Now, I already know of one resources and it, of course this resource is on the top of my list because of how well I know about this resource and that is handfitness.com. Now, for the people that don't know about handfitness.com, I'm kind of shocked because it's one of the 
big popular things in a lot of the gloving groups that you see. And if you don't know about the person who founded this website, it's I find that criminal in this case. Now, I can understand if you just started a couple weeks ago or within, I'll probably say within three years if you started gloving, I can understand and concede to the fact that, you know, you just didn't know. But handfitness.com was founded by a guy named Greg Irwin, which back in the 80s, he was on a, uh, what's his name? Johnny Carson, excuse me, sorry, I had to, I had to remember. He was on a Johnny Carson show and he was explaining hand fitness and things like that. Now, get to give a little bit of background of Greg Irwin is that he used to be, well, still kind of is, but he is a musician's teacher. And one of the things that he learned through his time in college, trying to learn music theory and all that stuff, because to be a musical teacher, you had to learn how to play a very huge plethora of different instruments. So what he learned during his time there was that, you know, hand fitness is pretty much where he needed to focus on because that's what musicians use the most is their hands so he devised this whole fitness i i'm not entirely sure how to put it, this this fitness catalog of different exercises that you can use for your hands as well as your arms and your elbows and things like that so don't don't just think he's thinking just hands he actually thought of forearms and elbows and upper arms as secondary and tertiary points that you need to focus on because again all of those are connected therefore they all work as one unit so you can definitely go on there he has plenty of different devices that you can use he has these little fiddle things you know fiddle fidgets things that he has that you can pretty much that helps work with hand strength and uh, finger independence and things like that he has a plethora of different tutorials that you can go through he also has a YouTube channel that you can check out as well that will give you a lot more in-depth stuff so if you want to have a much more advanced in-depth analysis about hand fitness handfitness.com is the place that you need to go i will certainly say do not hesitate about purchasing a couple of items from there because they're literally designed to help you with your hand fitness altogether okay and again i find that extremely important especially when it comes to gloving so you know you have that and then of course you got moves.com i've said this couple times now actually a few times if i actually remember correctly that you got moves.com is literally an e-learning academy site that is designed specifically for gloving in mind it has been founded by very well-known glovers in the community who will actually spend one-on-one -on -one time with you individually granted when you have the appointment scheduled to actually work with you not only on your concepts and pretty much moves but they do also work on stretching and there's a good amount of stretching tutorials that you can find in there as well that will definitely help you get farther ahead. You know, so those are the first two main places I would recommend you going to get much more in-depth analysis. Now, I can certainly say that when it comes to handfitness.com and their tutorials, it's rather free. You got moves.com, certain stuff that you might have to pay for, but I will certainly tell you this. When it comes to e-learning academies, if you're that dedicated to whatever the situation may be, in this particular case, gloving, actually paying a little upfront to learn so much in such a short time is going to be exponentially much more beneficial to you. And again, I said this in a previous episode, I'm sure I have, but it's something that my mom has always told me, especially when it came to law. That one hour consultation, you can learn all the information you ever need on your case than you will ever do on your own. So. That's how I always look at yougotmoves.com is that it literally, you know, you get one hour, well, at least I don't, not entirely sure. I never really actually looked into it, but I've actually helped people get there. And a lot of people have told me that, yeah, within an hour, they've learned so much and they help exponentially grow themselves as a Glover. So definitely check those two places out. Now there is a lovely third reference point that you can use in terms of a resource and that's YouTube. Now. I had plenty of people on various different platforms actually show me different playlists, which I will have linked down in this episode description so you guys don't have to go searching for it. I will have it all compiled down there for you so you guys know where it is. Definitely check those out. There's multiple different ways that people have come up with. So my recommendation is that if you just watch somebody's playlist for a little while and if there's certain things that you like about it, that's great. 
If there's not, there are other tutorials that you can go, go look at. And like I've always said to people, it's all about that trial and error of trying to find what works for you. Because unfortunately, everybody works differently. Therefore, not everything in terms of a cookie cutter experience is going to work for everybody. You know, and I will certainly say even from my own experience of teaching my younger brother, who is a former pupil now is a peer, and my other friend on stretching and concept things, you know, I had to adapt not my teachings to them, but, to, you know, pretty much have them adapt the teachings that I need to teach them, if that makes any sense. I know that was kind of confusing, but, <laughs> you know, certain things that work for me don't necessarily work for my own brother. Like a great example is that I'm left-handed and he's right-handed. I learn much more easily from a visual design aspect as opposed to him, he can actually learn much better just from written word. You know, now granted certain things that you kind of have to, you have to show to help emulate what you're trying to convey, but that's just something that you have to take in consideration is that even something as somebody being left-handed or being right-handed, their way of learning is going to be different, you know? So that's what I always want to try to convey to a lot of people. One last piece of resource that I've been addressed to was a Facebook group called the stretching lounge and this is where somebody who is a Glover who dedicated this group to literally expanding people's understanding of stretching okay and there's multiple different stretches there's tons of stretches and this is one of those groups that I would highly recommend anyone to actually join due to the fact that you'll be able to actually have all this knowledge and actually have a community to discuss with people on ideas that help not only yourself but people that you're probably trying to teach like that's I wish I knew that existed for a long time because then I wouldn't have to do a whole bunch of you know coming to terms of learning things on my own you know so and this of course this is why this episode is being made so you know one thing I do want to let everybody know is that I did talk to my younger brother about this topic and the thing that he kind of had to remind me of is that he <laughs> He's very elastic in terms of his joints and his tendons and stuff, so he can do some pretty, uh, lack of a better phrase, unorthodox stretches. Like, I swear to God, I've seen him literally put his hands on his hips and literally just curl his elbows to touch each other in front of him like that, like a weird reverse chicken thing. You know, so I've seen that. <laughs> so what I did is I did talk to him and I asked him if he can actually record a few videos of these stretches and not only that, but to also explain what he's doing in these stretches and how to get there and also explain what muscles he feels being stretched so he can actually convey that to you. Hopefully within the next month or two, he will have those done and I will actually try to pick up some video editing software, which I'm pretty sure I have somewhere, to actually compile this entire course that he's going to do for me which again to my younger brother thank you so much for helping me out you have been a very valuable resource in helping me out on these topics thank you so much but yes i'm hoping that within the next month or two he'll have all of those compiled and recorded and hopefully i will have all of those and actually get those edited and dressed up rather nicely so you guys will know other than that you know you got the stretching lounge which is to me probably one of the great places that you go to it's that YouTube, YouGotMoves.com, and HattonFitness.com are pretty much the best places that I would say to go in terms of stretching. So hopefully we'll get some more progress done soon in terms of the videos for my younger brother as well. But other than that, that's pretty much it for my episode. I definitely want to take a quick time to say a couple of things. So first things first. I'm actually kind of surprised and shocked at the fact of how how much likes I've gotten on the page and on the channel within you know the recent couple weeks uh, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who's liked the page so far and has been listening recently I I honestly was not expecting to see such a jump in growth uh, just considering that the trend that I've been having was rather slow and I can certainly say that yes I'm probably not doing enough to expand it but with with a little luck and a little bit of hope, <laughs> I can probably get that changed. But I, I do definitely want to thank everybody who has been liking the channel so far and actually joined pretty much on the channel as well to, to listen. I I can't can't express the feelings that it is that 
I have people who listen to me and actually take my words into consideration as not, you know, this divine law type thing, but as just another way to look at things and to approach things. So definitely want to thank everybody who, who's liked the page within a recent couple of weeks. I had like 16 likes within two weeks and that I have never seen a burst of likes like that in a long time. So the other thing I do want to also say is I want to thank everybody who's been responding and interacting with me on the questions I have asked. I highly, highly appreciate you guys' willing to actually take a little bit of time to actually respond out of your day. Uh, I, I know some people it, it's really difficult because you know we all have these really, really busy lifestyles, but just a little time to actually talk to me on that is exponentially helpful and most informative in my opinion. So definitely want to thank everybody who has responded and actually gave me all the resources you guys shared it is absolutely fantastic to actually have pretty much the entire the entire realm of gloving and people actually come together and working on you know helping provide the information that a lot of newcomers may feel like they need so definitely want to thank all of you guys now i'll certainly say if there are questions that you have that i haven't covered in this episode you can definitely ask me at any time i will try to be as responsive quickly at responding as possible so the various places that you can always hit me up at is, of course, on the Facebook page, which is aptly named The Gloving Paradigm. And you can also find me on Reddit under the username MuttonChopGuy, as well as you can hit me up at my email, which is MuttonChopGuy at gmail.com. And of course, I do have a Discord server, which I know I have been neglecting. I really need to fix that problem. So hopefully I will actually try to use it more often. I don't know why I keep neglecting it, but I do. So... If you want to get on my Discord server, that would be fantastic. I would like to actually interact more often on there. Granted, I don't have a whole lot of people on that, but I'm going to try to push that out even further. So hopefully all the information I was able to give to you is enough to actually help you get started. And again, if you have any questions that you need to ask me, you have all these various outlets that you can hit me up. So that's pretty much it for my episode. I would like to thank everyone who's liked the page again and everyone who's been interacting. You guys are all amazing. If it wasn't for you guys, I probably would still be here talking to myself and no one listening, you know? <laughs> so that is it. I'm your host, Peter, a.k.a. LPDA Dubuque, and I'll see you guys all next week.